Hello my dear guardians today we will learn to read CT scan brain the mnemonic which can be useful is blood can be very bad in which you can see the sequence of important things to see in a CT scan brain which are blood cisterns brain ventricle and bone First B stands for blood in which we will learn epidural subdural hematoma along with intraperenchymal and intraventricular hemorrhages and subarachnoid hemorrhage to identify epidural hematoma they are pi convex in shape same like our eyeball so you can remember E for epidural and E for eyeball usually beneath the squamous part of temporal bone Second is subdural hematoma, which is thin crescent-like in shape and occur in space between dura mater and rachnoid layer, which is second meningeal layer. While epidural hematoma is seen between skull and dura mater, which is outermost meningeal layer. Now we will see intraparenchymal and intraventricular hemorrhages. Intraparenchymal hemorrhage, as name indicates, is bleeding in brain parenchyma, while intraventricular hemorrhage is bleeding around ventricles, which is space in brain containing cerebral spinal fluid. Most common cause of intraparenchymal hemorrhage is hypertension, while primary interventricular hemorrhage is rare, but causes are intravascular tumors and aneurysms. Next is subarachnoid hemorrhage which is mostly caused by a burst of blood vessels in brain also called as brain aneurysm and its shape looks like a spider hence called subarachnoid other causes of subarachnoid hemorrhage include trauma and tumors the next word of mnemonic is can and c shows cisterns which can be circummesencephalic cistern which has a ring shape appearance around midbrain while supercellular cistern has star shaped appearance in circle of villus the quadrigeminal cistern has w shaped appearance between colliculi the splenium of corpus callosum and superior surface of cerebellum which then extends to third ventricle to create cerebral vein the sylvian cistern is last most important cistern to be seen on ct brain which is also called insular cistern and deep part of sylvian fissure present between temporal and frontal lobe the next B of mnemonic for brain in which we will look for presence of blood on first hand which will cause effacement of brain surface. After this we will see the symmetry of cisterns and ventricles which are asymmetrical in this film. After this we will observe fox which should be in midline. On CT scan of brain, blood pooling appears as hyperdensity. The other things except blood which can be hyperdensity on CT scan brain are bone calcification and IV contrast. The next step is to look for gray and white differentiation which is used when trying to differentiate from cytotoxic and vasogenic edema. The earliest sign of cerebrovascular accident is loss of gray-white differentiation. Acute hypoxic brain injury may be manifested on brain CT as loss of gray-white differentiation. Now we will see ischemic strokes of brain which can be seen on hypodensity on CT scan. Other things that could be hypodensities include air and gas fats and tumors the next v on mnemonic stands for ventricles which can have intraventricular hemorrhages in which blood in ventricles appears as hypodense material heavier than csf and so tends to pool dependently best seen on occipital horns while second thing is hydrocephalus in which size of both temporal horns is greater than 2 mm and clearly visible. 
next is beyond mnemonic for bone and you should see for fracture of skull and also any evidence of intracranial layer or penetration or violation of skull and dura mater